Hi, I'm Mike Ryan. In our book, Turquoise in America, Part 2, one of the important aspects of the book are the stories of turquoise. And these are the people who have participated in making the history of turquoise in America, telling their own stories. And one of those who told his story was Wayne Nelson. Today, we're very fortunate because Wayne is in Santa Fe and he has agreed to share with us on Turquoise in America, his collection of turquoise. Now to remind everyone, Wayne Nelson was cutting turquoise for Francis Farr at Lone Mountain, 1974 and 1975. In 1976, and for the next several years, Wayne was instrumental in selling most of the 600 pounds of turquoise that was extracted from the Hidden Valley turquoise mine. In 1985, Wayne obtained the only turquoise concession from the Candelaria Silver Mine, and he was able to work the dumps there, take out a lot of Candelaria turquoise. He sold a lot, but he kept the best for his own collection. So today, we're going to take a look at the Wayne Nelson Turquoise Collection. All right. So we're here with Wayne Nelson with the Wayne Nelson Turquoise Collection. So uh, Wayne, welcome. Thanks for sharing this, uh, this incredible collection of turquoise. Maybe uh, we talked earlier about how you put the collection together. Maybe you could just share a few insights into how this, this collection got together over the years. Well, I started out in 74 at Lone Mountain Mine as a cutter. And from there, uh, when I left there, I started buying turquoise from miners and cutting and selling cut stone. And that's how I really started. So then you you were cutting at at Lone Mountain, Lone Mountain, so we're gonna see some of the, the Lone Mountain caps, but you certainly have a lot more of the uh, Hidden Valley and a lot more of the Candelaria. So I think it was in 76 when that uh, Hidden Valley came to the market. In 76, I had Hidden Valley. And then you bought all of that with 600 pounds, I think it was the- Yeah, I bought it all. Yeah, we're gonna see some really high grade Hidden Valley here that most people probably haven't seen in the marketplace. And I think a lot of that came from one piece of rock that I think you have there. It came from, from a piece of rock that I had for 44 years and never cut. And when I cut it, this stone here is the rock off it. And on the other piece, all these high grade pieces came off that piece. And I think we just calculated that that total nugget or that total piece of rock was about 16 pounds. Roughly 14 to 16 14 pounds. to 16 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's really, uh, really quite spectacular. And so these stones, yeah. really high grade pieces yeah. off that. Well, let's take a look at, uh, let's get, take a little closer look at uh, some of the collection. So we're going to start with the uh, Hidden Valley here. Or actually, we'll start right here. We've got uh, just the fewest cabs that you have of all of these are here from Lone Mountain. And I guess that where you were just basically involved in cutting at that point. Yeah. So you just didn't have as much access to these. But these are really exceptional uh, grade of uh, Lone Mountain. Very, very high grade Lone Mountain turquoise. What was it like uh, cutting out there in 74 and 75? Well, I had a big cutting, a 40, 40 foot reefer trailer that was set up for a cutting shop out at the mine. And that's where I cut the stone for them. And I was cutting about 5,000 carats a week. 
of that small snow. And then after I left there, I had people come by and want to know if I wanted to buy Lone Mountain. So I bought a little bit. And I I bought what I could, and then I cut the snow. Great, great. Well, here now we're looking over here at this uh, this exceptional grade of Hidden Valley. And you're saying that this these stones came off of that big nugget. And that was a, probably the highest grade I ever had on all the Hidden Valley. Yeah. Well, like here, really rare. Here I see I've already cheated a little bit and that I've got a couple of Candelaria here <laughs> mixed in. But uh, we do see over here in this tray over here, we see a little, um, a little variety here in the different, although this would all be considered, I think, very, very high grade. Now, did most of this come off of that? That all came off it as as I cut into it. It varied from from all of that different uh, grades. This grade here looks a little bit uh, a little bit different color, a little lighter. Now, that's color. that's from the turquoise before the stone before this one. Okay, so we did have a range, and would it be more like we see in these nuggets? Yeah, here. Now, you had mentioned, we have an article about Hidden Valley on our blog, and you had mentioned that when you first saw this, you didn't even know if you wanted to buy it because some of it was kind of crumbly? Or Well, it looked crumbly, yes. It wasn't cleaned or anything. It was a mine run deal. Now, did it come in these nuggets? Was there veins as well? well? Once I cleaned them up, they were nuggets. Yeah. And then there was some rock like this. Okay. So you probably had no idea with that big rock. Well, you said it sat in your daughter's display case for 40 years. Yeah, yeah. I didn't have a saw big enough to cut it. Oh, tell us how you finally ended up cutting that. <laughs> well, I took and bought a rock uh, diamond blade from my skill saw and used a water hose and cut halfway through one side and halfway through the other. <laughs> and after I'd cut it, there was a crack running right here on both pieces. And so on the other half of the rock, this one was mostly rock, but the other side was where all this high-grade turquoise was. And it buried as I sliced through the pieces. Isn't that something? So here we see some more different kind of grades of uh, Hidden Valley. And most of that is from the, the rock before that big rock. Before the big rock, because you, you were selling this. How long would you say after you got in 76, how many years before you had sold all that, cut and sold that 600 pounds? Although you sold rough, right? I sold rough to I sold rough to people and I sold cut stones. Can you share with some of the folks you sold the... That were your customers then for the Hidden Valley? Uh, Don Mortensen. I sold him quite a bit of rum. Don Mortensen was in Albuquerque, I think. Gallup. Right? Gallup. In Gallup. Okay, that's right. That's right. I cut stones to a lot of people. A lot people. of people. You told us you... sold some of the first stone to Charles and Loma. So to Alan Yellow Horse. Well, those are all big names uh, in the in the jewelry business, that's for sure. White Buffalo. Mm -hmm. uh, Santa Domingo, I sold to a man who I was Um Julian Lovato. Julian Lovato, yes. Yeah. And uh Well, Julian Lovato was known uh, for using a uh, Lone Mountain, mm -hmm. a very high grade Lone Mountain. Yeah. Of course, but all he of, used a lot of good, good stone. He wanted good stone. Well, yeah. most of the jewelry they don't, they don't care so much about the mine. They want the grade. If you got the grade, that's what they they really want. Well, it's really special turquoise. But then we see the, the largest component in your collection here is the Candelaria. So that was really unique in that while most of the Candelaria has been what we call high graded in that it was 
uh, taken uh, without permission off of the silver mine property, you had a concession. You had I permission. Had, I had the turquoise rights to the Campbell area from uh, Ralph Van Arnsdale in 1985. And it was kind of a short-lived deal. I, I, uh, took, I got a mine run. They didn't want anybody going in the mine, so I didn't really mind it. What they did when they hit the turquoise, they're mining silver and gold. They made an area where they would dump the rock and I could go in there and pick it and pay for it mine run. So you go in there and pick it, put it in your truck, and then they'd weigh it and you'd pay for it on the spot? You'd pay for five gallon buckets, yeah. yeah. And uh, it was kind of short lived. So here we're looking at some some Candelaria turquoise. Now I would say this this one is what a lot of folks would think of as kind of the very high high grade gem grade, kind of that typical little bit of a red web background yeah. with that very distinctive uh, turquoise formation mm -hmm. in there. A little bit different look down here with a little darker matrix on that. Uh, then you have these these cabs like that that have almost what some people would call like a water web, a little a little more different look. These two cabs here have a different look. All high grade, but different, unique and different. Indeed. And this was really rare. There was only about three pieces of that quote. And then we, I wanted to point that out. Thanks for pointing that out. This dark web that really is perhaps the most rare of, of all turquoise. There's only a few pieces uh, that really exist in that. And this was a beautiful piece, but it's it's different again, you know? Yeah, yeah. That almost has like kind of what you think of in a smoky Bisbee look, but it certainly Candelaria, very, very distinctive. And then down here we see this, and this has some more polychrome, like a polychrome look that, that uh, generally not associated with Candelaria, but exceptionally beautiful turquoise. This more again of that traditional uh, high grade, gem grade Candelaria look, as are those, yeah. Uh, but and, then- And this one here, a beautiful, just a really nice color stone. Beautiful stone. Then we have in this, this larger tray over here, we're going to see more of I think what most people commonly associate with a, uh, a much more seen uh, Candelaria look, yeah. not in the same grades as as this this high grade uh, the gem grade here, and but a lot certainly of, very it's beautiful. It's a lot lighter than this. Well, yeah, yeah, and still, while it while it doesn't have the the matrix and the depth here, it certainly has a very brilliant, beautiful color to it. Yeah. And for a lot of folks, that's what they've seen in a lot of jewelry with Candelaria turquoise. Well, Wayne, thanks very much for uh, sharing your collection with us here. And uh, we really appreciate you did that. Thank you.